Hello, Brian Reed here with Firewalls.com. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain to you about uh, NAT policies and then demonstrate how to create one to allow remote access to uh, a Windows uh, terminal server access or RDP access. Now, in general, a NAT policy, NAT is a network address translation. It's where we will take a public IP address that's been assigned to us by our ISP and translate it into a private IP address, be it like a 192.168.1.1 1 .1 address or a 10. Dot something address. And then we'll create uh, what services we want to allow to translate from that public IP address into the local network host. Okay, to begin, we'll go to Network, then NAT Policies, and we'll select Add. Okay, creating the NAT Policies, the first thing we have to do is define the original source. An original source is simply the address where the request is going to be coming from. Now, for our demonstration, we're going to show how to open up access to uh, the remote desktop session or Windows terminal services from anywhere on the Internet. So if we've got a salesperson or an IT person who's out on the road, uh, they want to have access to the server. So in this case, the original source, we're going to go ahead and select any. This way it's open up to anybody who's got a public internet uh, access. Second option is the translated source. Now this feature very seldom is used but what it can do is you can take the public IP address of the remote user and when their request shows up in the firewall you can translate their address to a totally different uh, address that you want to use uh, internally. Uh, very seldom is it used so we're going to go ahead and select original. Next is the original destination. What is the IP address that the remote user is trying to get to? So in here we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new address object and let's see we're going to name this We'll just call this our terminal server public and the zone assignment is going to be on the WAN side of the firewall type is host and we'll give it a, an address of 9999 okay so now we've got our original destination set up uh, we called it the terminal server public. We use the the four nines, the public IP address, which is an IP address given to us by our ISP. Now what we want to do is we want to translate that public IP address into an internal IP address. So we're going to hit, go ahead and create a new object. We'll call this terminal server private. That way we know this is going to be a, an address object for the private IP of our Windows terminal server. Zone assignment is going to be on our LAN side. Type a host, which is just going to be a single IP address. Uh, you know, we have options to do ranges of IPs or an entire network, but for the demonstration we're just going to do single single uh, Windows terminal server and we'll just call that 192.168.1.9 select OK okay so so far we're allowing anybody originating from anywhere in the world on the internet uh, we're not going to translate their IP address so when they show up to the firewall uh, they're going to have their original IP address and they are going to our Windows Terminal Server public address which was the four nines and then we're going to translate 
just that IP address to our terminal server private address, which is our 192 address on our LAN network. Now we need to go ahead and define what services we want to translate from that public IP address. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and select Windows Terminal Services. And here we also have an option where we can translate that terminal services to a totally different service um, on the inside of the network. Um, once again, that's another feature that's not really used a whole lot, but it's an option. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and keep it original. That way, when the request comes in, it's going to get translated to the terminal services port, which is uh, TCP 3389. Next, we can define which inbound interface we're going to use. Uh, in this case, you know, it's going to show you every possible interface uh, on uh, available on the Sonic Wall. Good rule of thumb is to go ahead and just keep it at any. Uh, that way, if you start creating uh, different WAN interfaces where you have like dual uh, WAN connections or load balancing, this way you can still continue to use this NAT policy and have this uh, applied to. Uh, any one of the interfaces wherever that 9999 public address ends up at. Outbound interface, we'll just leave that at any. Because once again, the Sonic Wall is going to know where the terminal server uh, private IP address is located. Then you can enable a, a comment uh, to describe what the NAT policy is if you like. Then the last two options, we can enable the NAT policy, of course, by default that's selected. So that as soon as we select uh, add, it's going to go ahead and implement that policy. And then a very handy feature uh, is a, what's called a reflexive policy. And what this does is this will create uh, an outbound poli NAT policy that's similar to this inbound policy. So in other words, when we select that, the Sonic Wall will NAT any um, outbound connections to uh, terminal services from the private IP address server to the public IP. Uh, IP. Uh, this way, this can be helpful if uh, you want to have your Windows server use and appear as one of your uh, given IP addresses from your ISP instead of using the default WAN IP address of the Sonic Wall. Then we just select Add, and now the policy is complete. So there you have it. That's uh, what's involved in, in the different steps when creating a NAT policy for allowing anybody on the internet to access. Uh, a Windows server using terminal services. Okay, hope you found this video useful.